we can officially start. Yeah. Welcome to the Silver Lake Priestess podcast. I am Jamie Black. I am here today with Kim Keller, and we are going to have a juicy conversation with you about sacred sexuality. Let's see. Let me in, let me get our uh, Instagram people uh, to be part of this as well. Wow, technology. I think we did a really good job, but we are almost okay. Here we go live and we're live okay so here we are let's all take a breath a nice exhale and here we are present inside of this amazing technology where we can amazing i just told you when you were when i was watching you set up you're the technology priestess I was just amazed. I was in awe watching you make all of that work. Thank you. Yes. And they need to make it easier for us. I feel like it's, it's got to be coming soon, but I really just need to be able to press one button where I'm on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I already have the, the you know, dictation. It just, you know, it's set up. So I'm just going to post the same information on each of them and everyone is tagged and it just, you know, it needs to be easy. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Anyway, we're here. We're we here. Got so, um, so I'm really excited to introduce Kim. Um, I know Kim through Priestess Grail, who we just had on again the podcast just a couple days ago. So um, these women are up at the Goddess Temple of Ashland. Incredible, beautiful place, really magical energy, and really beautiful community. And the work that all of you are doing up there together mm. is just it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, um, I feel, so I feel really blessed to be in a community that has a goddess temple. We have people come in from all over, um, to come here because we have this goddess temple that, um, when you arrive to the land, we're always very clear that the goddess temple is the land, not the structure that is a dome and not the red tent that is a beautiful structure, but that the temple is this, acre or so of land, a little less than that, that is just so um, fertile and alive and we live in the season or we move with the seasons and we celebrate the seasons and we um, do the cross quarters and full moon and new moon and we really have this um, group, this, this coalesced group that gets to be in that kind of ancient priestess approach. And, and I mentioned I'm on the elders council. And so there are, I think seven of us this year on the elders council that um, are just there to really hold and create that container so that people can come and go and priestess Crayel can do what she does and travel the way she does and um, take the word out and set up temples, goddess temples all over. And we can hold that space for her to continue to, to uh, come back to every time. It's giving me chills. Mm. Anyway, just mm. hearing about it. It's, it's so beautiful how in that space, the elders are honored, the women are honored, the men are honored, people who don't identify as any of those like are honored to just show up and be how they are. Um, there's education about menstrual cycles and blood rights and everybody is as educated about it. There's all sorts of um, education and sexuality and then ritual and then working with the land and so honoring the goddess, the earth that we live on and it really, I'm always saying this, I've actually had so many girls now on the podcast from there, I've had Grail, I've had Priestess Laura, I've yeah. had Ashley with her yeah. uh, modern goddess lifestyle, and yeah. now we have you. Yeah, um, lovely. So yeah, and it's, we'll have it's, to, one time when you when you're when we're ready for this, I would love to take you to the temple, and we could be on the land and show you some of show all of you this beautiful land and. Um, oh, I did. I did. I know I mean for your people, for your audience. Yes. Oh yes, that would be so great. I would love that. Yeah, yes. take you take you all there and show yeah. you this place. And I know, um, Jamie, that you've been there and uh, the priestess convergence happens once a year and it's just such a magical time to be there and live at the temple for a long weekend and um, really put your heart and your body and your ear right on the earth and um, pray with the frogs and 
and be in the berries and it's lovely. Yeah, really special. It's truly magical. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, we would love to hear about a little bit about your personal journey into, so you're a sacred sexuality coach. We're going to hear about what you do. Um, I was putting information out there for everyone, you know, to prep for the interview. And I was also sharing that you're one of the co-facilitators for this uh, tantric festival that's coming up that yeah. this and it's actually going to be online. So we're going to get to hear a little bit about all of this. But one something that I really like to um, make space for in this podcast is really just to listen to the personal journey mm. of the different women that come here to share because we can all identify and we can all relate to it. And whether, um, whether we're hearing a story from someone that is younger than us or older than us or in the same place that we are, there's wisdom in it. Um, for all of us. So I would really love to hear about your journey into into sacred sexuality and into this work that you're doing. Yeah, I would, I'd love to share. It's It's been such a serendipitous and very, very guided. I really, it has, I never imagined this is what I would be doing. I come from a background my whole adult life. I was a drug and alcohol counselor and lived in Southern California and was married um, to a law enforcement officer. And we raised two kids and had a very Southern California house on the hill kind of life. And, but I was always a seeker. I've always been a a questioner and a seeker and breaking out of boxes of being raised in a very um, limited uh, church that really told me life was supposed to look one way. And so as, a, as an adult, I was really always looking and seeking and I call myself a workshop junkie, um, whether I'm presenting workshops or attending workshops. I really have a deep love for dedicated time for self-reflection and dedicated time for breaking out of some of the pathways and ideas about how the world's supposed to work that have been given to me that haven't really come from me internally, but they've come from the culture and the society in which we live in. And so I've, I, I had been breaking out of that for a long time, most all my 23 year marriage. And when the kids grew up and the, my baby was graduating high school, I, just knew it was time for a new seek, a new experience, a new exploration. I had a travel bug. I had a bug for India. I don't know why or what for. I trust that I had a bug. I have a bug for India. Um, I had a bug for just getting out and seeing the world. I was 45 before I had a passport or before I'd ever left the continent or before I even knew where things were on the globe. It was amazing how sheltered and um, unaware that I grew up in this white bubbled Southern California experience that really didn't allow, I just didn't ever have that come across. And so as a middle-aged woman, I got on a path and decided to really start exploring things. And um, I had a girlfriend who said, "I let me take you to a Tantra retreat. And I had no idea what Tantra was. I had never heard of such a thing. My brother was kind of involved in some edgy stuff and I didn't really, I wasn't really all that keen on it. Um, and I went to this weekend retreat in Portland and she and I sat in the front row petrified of what we might learn about ourselves and oh my god they're gonna make us talk about our vaginas um, <laughs> and then we learned no actually we're gonna talk about our yonis and it went from vagina of a very medical messy keep it in the dark don't really know how it works don't really I learned so much in that weekend I'd had two babies how could they be telling me things about my body that I didn't know and they were, they were telling me things about my body I didn't know. And so I got captivated really quickly. And yoni is the Sanskrit word for um, sacred space. And it, it holds the, the whole of our sacred space. So it's everything from womb to ovaries, to vaginal canal, to vulva, to the pleasure system of the clitoris. It's all of that is encompassed in the word yoni as sacred space when I really started to understand that there was a sacredness here that included taking in a soul and producing a human, 
that took the the mythos of what could happen in this sacred space and that it is the source of everything that started to really shift now how I was looking at sexuality and how I was looking at myself as a sexual being and where was I on the then I then I learned non-binary that that actually the sexual um, continuum of everything from masculine to feminine and all the beautiful variations of what's possible in between but we've been enculturated to think you're either over here or you're over here and those are our only two options everybody else is at some kind of broken deficit instead of actually no there is wisdom and beauty and this blend of what we all carry so when I started doing that, that was about um, 15 years ago that my coaching, I had been a drug alcohol counselor and a, and a coach for mostly young people and teachers. I worked in education and suddenly now I'm teaching and feeling and hearing about this sacred sexuality. And it really began with the jade egg. And I know Priestess Grail just was here and talked about jade, jade egg and practice and the wand and um this is this is a jade egg here <clears throat> that you use in your vaginal canal um so it's an energetic tool that goes into yoni and um i started that practice and had a couple of girlfriends who wanted to start with me and so we just kind of naturally picked it up and that was just the beginning of a huge opening in my world. And um, suddenly I'm gathering women in my living room and we're having jade egg gatherings and we're starting to understand the potency of being in deep connection with my inner landscape that I had not been. Like I mentioned, I've had two babies and I haven't had the, in, the connection to my inner landscape like I do now with my practice um, and my time on the mat and my time really connected to that inner piece of me. So now here I am, I've been a professional tantrika. I, I put my flag in the sand. It was a big scary thing um, about seven years ago, a little over seven years ago and um, have been ever since it was an immediately the right choice It immediately started to um, fill my every waking moment. And so I now work with, um, I work with people, um, all genders. I work with one-on-one, -on -one. I work in small groups. Um, I have for the last seven years had a, an annual event called Tending the Temple, Sacred Care of Yoni, um, where I'd bring 13 women at a time, two times a year really the heart of my practice and my heart of my desire of the of my work and as we know things are shifting and things are moving um but a few years ago we decided to i got called by a girlfriend and said let's do a tantra festival and so we started four years ago with the oregon tantra festival outside of portland and it has just blossomed and it is really the the heart of my summers are around our tantra festivals and so we've made this crazy wild decision to try it online and uh, how, how to do that. And I think it's gonna be incredible. Our, our staff is incredible, our themes are incredible. Um, and I just get to be the MC and the hostess of the whole thing and, and, and see who we, and create the community of people that we're gonna still be able to create through a two week festival. We're gonna spread it out so people can, integrate it and take it in without feeling like we're putting them under a fire hose and okay. over, um, overfilling. So you'll have um, like different presenters and so then we'll be watching like classes. Yeah. Um, you're going to be teaching. Yep. And so, um, so yeah, I, I, I wasn't intending to talk too much about the festival. Thank you for asking. Thank you for asking. Um, Oh, I am going to actually, I, I could totally attend this. I could use this information in my life right now. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're going to do it again in October. So these festivals that are online, what I'm learning about them most of all is, so we're going to have 24 um, facilitator teachers, leaders that are from all over. We've got a couple in Hawaii and one in North Carolina, South Carolina, North Carolina. We've got them in Canada and up and down the West Coast. And to be able to have these really powerful teachers who have been deeply committed to this path, 
come into your home, give you these little pieces of deep wisdom. Our workshops are everything from what's called white yoga. When your your yoga, your practice, tantra is from yoga. Our tantra was first. Yoga came out of tantra four thousand years ago. I want to acknowledge that it is a, a lineage and a culture and a history that is not my birth culture, and so I um, honor and and. Uh, listen as best I can living in the culture that I am in and so I acknowledge that Sanskrit is not my tongue Sanskrit is not my sacred language but I'm learning by being able to listen to a language and a teaching that has been around for thousands of years mm. and um, and so being able to do that to have these teachers and then be at home here's here's something else that about Tantra festivals is my clients get a little nervous about going to a festival and being with people where sexuality might be a little more prevalent or a little more present. And it, it is a tender, tender topic and a tender territory. And I always say, I want to really hold the, the, the newest newbies among us, as well as create space for those who have been practicing and are ready to really up level. And so in this kind of way, if Tantra or sacred sexuality has felt like a scary undertaking, like hard, who'd go to a festival about that? This is an opportunity to do it from home, to be able to integrate it, talk about it with your partner or partners, um, bring in a good friend and do it together, uh, pick the, choose the classes that suit you. And when I say that, that's where our classes are, are scaled. We have white Tantra where it says personal practice and I'm really doing all of the work my, on my own. We have pink classes, which are more sensually oriented. There'll be lots of, we have some teaching about the inner landscapes. We have some, we have one specifically on learning the lingam, which is the penis. Um, uh, I think it's even called uh, Luscious Lingam Loving is the name mm -hmm. of that workshop. And um, so it's for, for all genitalia, all genders. And um, those are, some of those classes are pink in, in their sensual nature. And then we have red classes, which are the erotic, going to be more sexually oriented classes. We have a self-love ritual that's happening, which is really powerful to come into heightened states of self-love together and create an energized field of erotic um, innocence and erotic presence and use that energy that can make a life and use that energy to really make our lives be what we know we want to be and how to put that into service of those around us in the world around us and the more love and more of that self self erotic innocence that we can bring in the more ability we have to really um show up fully and be able to be part of, um, I don't want to say the solution, but, but part of helping what is a really challenged world, really challenged. And part of that challenge is that we have been separated from ourselves. We have been very disconnected from our own human experience. And part of our human experience is our sex and our pleasure. Yeah, this is really, um, this is really important. It's really, it sounds really beautiful, everything that's being offered, but, um, you know, I'm, of course, like having my own personal response to what it is that you're saying. And yeah, yeah. Um, sexuality is, it's separate. Like we separate it from ourselves. I definitely separate it from myself. Um, I, you know, and just in those recent years, like I just kind of identify as someone who's not like don't identify with my sexuality. And I have also made my sexuality a bit, um, maybe like a weak part of myself or a feminine part of myself that also that was another thing with me and growing up. Um, I grew up around a bunch of guys. I'm a martial artist. I wasn't interested in being soft and pretty and delicate and polite and feminine. I, I like, I don't even cry nowadays even still. I mean, I do have Capricorn moon that kind of does that to me, but I'm not, that's not, I didn't, I just, that's not like an easy part of my practice. It's something that I have to like create space for. Um, and so, yeah, just it's, it is uncomfortable, I think, for people, for lots of people. I mean, there's people that listen to some of these things that I put out sometimes or friends that I say that I'm going to do this or I'm going to do like a, 
a community yoni steaming and girls are like oh but you know does everyone have to look at everyone's vagina and all of this and like i want to go but that sounds so scary and yeah. so i think this work is really it's really important like of course there's people who are open and they're just they're ready to come and like participate sure. in something I would definitely be someone that would be like, well, I don't know if I really want to go to a festival. I mean, maybe if it's women only, but if there's going to be men there, like I'm not really interested in that. And so it's just it's interesting that um, uh, those of us that maybe are like open in some ways and still that's, you know, that's, that's something. And, you know, the thing about this um, stay at home situation, one of the things that has been really incredible for everyone is everything that we're being that's offered everything that we're being able to participate in and conversations that we're able to listen to festivals that we're able to go to and just stay at home. You can stay at home. You can partake. You don't have to have your camera on. People don't have to see you. You can also totally meet and interact with all kinds of people that yeah. maybe if you decide to go show up into that community or festival the next year, you'll meet them in person and you've already met them online, but something like this, what a great way for somebody who might not be ready to do that in person. For Absolutely. Them. Absolutely. And I want to back the conversation way up too, because you just made exactly the point that I was wanting to make. And that is you too grew up that thinking feminine meant soft and squishy and emotional and blah, 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 blah. And that's what we've held that to be. And masculine is this other thing where we get to do martial arts and we get to be that thing. And what you really have just said exactly what I was trying to say. I live in the feminine side of things. I, that's where I identify. It's where I lean. But to know that and to remember and to hold in sacred, sacred, trust that we are on a continuum and that you live somewhere outside of that far feminine side not not that you aren't feminine here's the here's the part that we're really beginning to grok i can look at you and see your brilliant femininity that just flows out of you look at you priestess jamie i mean really and it doesn't mean that what is high on your list is interaction with men, interaction with yo lingams, interaction with yonis. Like that may not be the medicine that you're bringing this time right now at this place. So there's a, a, an opening here to begin to really think about our sexuality as very, very unique to each of us and our genetics and our makeup and our history and our traumas and our dramas and our wounds and our loving places and our gifts and our medicine and, um, and make a space for all of that to fit. And a couple of years ago is when we got really clear at the Tantra Festival that we wanted to um, begin to make it way more accessible to all genders and to all sexual preferences and to all relationships. And so we started to um, teach the classes without gender necessarily genderizing the class. So for example, Jade Egg, which isn't for women, but it is for yonis. You can't, you don't put this in an anus. It's not safe in an anus. Um, it doesn't have a foot. An anus will suck things in and up and go into the bowel, into the intestine. Whereas this that goes in a vagina, a vagina has a top on it. It's not going to go anywhere. It can't get lost. It can't get sucked into anything and it can't get stuck because it's designed, it goes in a yoni. So I've started to teach butt plugs and, and prostate massage tools for the penis holders in the world. Um, we do sometimes call it male bodied, but that's not totally accurate either as we're learning um, how this change, how this change of awareness is happening. But butt plugs and, butt plugs are for all genders. Everybody can use a butt plug. <laughs> and prostate massagers are for people with lingams, with penises. Okay. So I began to teach all of that so that anyone, wherever they are, has an ability to bring into their embodiment a meditation and a connection and an understanding and an access to that divine source of life, 
right? Mm. Second chakra is where life comes from. And so all of us living get to learn what does it mean for me to have access through my life portal. My life portal is different than your life portal. And so we learn how to make it my own and how to really understand my own system. And there are things about systems that, you know, when I can have an opportunity to teach how the clitoris works and um, how the clitoris runs through all of our pelvic floor, it's so much more than just that little pearl that we think it is. Um, it's actually 18 parts and goes from anus to, goes from the front to the back and all the way up and connects to a vagus nerve that translates it all to our brains and connects to our nipples. It's quite an extensive system. And so um, learning some of that science system and then learning how does your snowflake, we're all snowflakes, how does your, how does that system run through your unique flavor of pleasure and beingness that's a that's a question for you to think for all of us to figure out specifically amazing really <laughs> i'm so excited to um to listen to some of this yeah yeah in fact one of the workshops i'm doing at the festival i've wanted to do this workshop for a very long time and i'm doing it with another tantrika um and tantrika is a word for um student of tantra and so as a student of Tantra um, and as an educator, a certified Tantric educator, um, myself and another sister were holding a circle at the festival for the male-bodied beings so that the male-bodied beings can be witnessed and vulnerable and open and speak their heart about the ups and downs, highs and lows, complications and beauty of having a lingam, of having a penis, and being able to talk about there is a tremendous amount of joy around many penises, and there is more trauma around penises, especially given a culture that starts by cutting the tip off, that starts by disconnecting babies from their mothers and their pleasure, and um, doing that kind of genital mutilation. And so there's a tremendous amount of wound um, in our precious male body beings. And I have a real heart for them too. And so my sister Nicole and I are holding a circle on Zoom um, specifically for the male body to be able to speak about what is happening between their heart and their penis, what's happening with that connection for them um, or not. Mm. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah, wow. This is, um, it's interesting doing this, um, doing the show because the, I come across people that have information that yes, I'm sharing with everyone else, but I actually am having, I'm having an experience, you know, myself and I'm having information brought to me that I need yeah. as well. Yeah. So, you know, and I invite you and anyone else who's having that feeling in this moment, I've just said a lot of things that can both be heart opening and exciting and can be trauma and triggering and contracting and fearful. And so I wanna really honor that if anyone here that's listening to this feels that contraction of fear or the contraction of separation, to really, I invite you to put one hand over your genitals and one on your heart and just take a few deep breaths and just send that heart energy right down into your genitals so that your pleasure system can feel your presence, can feel your love, can feel your interest and your listening and your wisdom. It is not a small thing when we learn to listen to what comes from our second chakra, our genitals, our life making. Yeah. So how do we find you mm. for everything that you offer? So we know this is happening this weekend. 
So this uh, happens this weekend. It starts on Saturday. Our opening ceremonies is at noon. Are is it noon on Saturday? Noon Pacific time, Saturday. Um, I keep having to say Pacific time because we have people coming from lots of lots of time zones. So we're running off Pacific, um, and that is O R Tantra Fest. Dot com. So that stands for Oregon, Oregon Tantra Fest, so O-R Tantra Fest. And um, the Tantra Fest, there's an easy registration. We also, we also have made some tiered um, levels of registration fee, really wanting to make sure that everyone, that this is super accessible to everyone. Um, another thing that is a, is a hidden blessing in doing this in Zoom is that we don't have a hard cost per person. We're not paying for rooms and food and facility. We can offer this to anyone who is really moved and inspired and interested. So we have a, tier, a pay tier situation. If you can afford, you pay a little more and help someone else come. And if you need some support and need to come into our scholarship program, we can do that too. So everyone can come. So it makes it more accessible. So that's for this weekend. Um, and you can find me in general. I want to say too, I have some free gifts that I want to offer um, to any female bodied beings who would like to learn more about Jade Egg and learn about why and what it really has the capacity to heal and open and move for us. And so I have a free video. It's a 90 minute Jade Egg class that right now is posted on my homepage for free. And I have a five part um, email series that has videos in it as well, but it's five emails that teach you how to use it, tell you exactly what to do with it and how to prep it and how to put a string in it and how to put it in and um, learning how to bring the egg in so that we are not just again penetrated, but that we actually have a relationship with our vaginal canal and can be actually opened and attracting in the stone. And then um, there's one more free gift on there. You can choose either the five part jade egg or I have one on the three secrets of sensational sex. And um, it gives you three different kinds of exercises of how to sit right in front of your partner and drop into deep intimate space that then affects the way in which you ultimately make love. And so that freebie is on my page too. So that is at kimrosekeller.com. Okay. Um, easy enough to find kimrosekeller.com and freebies are on there. I will put that in the, in the post here in the comments. I'll put it Great. in the show notes if you're listening to it on the podcast. Great. Um, really exciting. I'm going to go check out those things too. <laughs> Great. And then I do, um, I offer a 40 minute, what I call a breakthrough call. And it is a free, it is not an infomercial. It is 40 minutes of me guiding you through questions that just take you to some of the places where you can take a look at your own sexuality, where are you at with it, and what might really help you um, expand or deepen or relate in a, a healthier way with your sexuality. Shame busting is one of my one of my um, other favorite things. And so the free call is on my website and I invite anyone who would like to have 40 minutes of intimate conversation about things that we don't really have a chance to talk about very openly or very freely um, because it is such tender territory. And so um, I really mean it when I say there is a, a call and I, I offer that very freely as my, as my seva, as my service. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Mm. Here. You're so for, welcome. Uh, thank you for everything that you're doing mm. and what you're sharing. And um, it's really brave work. It's really yeah. brave. Work. And yeah. it's brave, I feel like, for anyone to step into learning these things about themselves and exploring. It's easy to have all of these things be closed and they can definitely be uncomfortable. And obviously there's some people have, you know, more dark things under there than others that need to be processed. But it really makes so much sense to me that as we like get to know ourselves in all of the different ways that we can just be more of who we are. Yeah. We can show up more um, for ourselves, for this life that we're living and then for everyone else. And, you know, it's how we, 
serve our sacred purpose. Like this, the more that we are who we are, the more that we accept ourselves, the more that we understand and know ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about this. I'm something I'd add one more little thing I'd add. And that is, um, wherever anyone is in their sexual journey, it's just right. It's mm-hmm. right where yeah, to, to let go of a story that um, it's one of the things I'm not, uh, I don't, I, I'm not anti porn, but porn has set a standard that says we're supposed to look like that. And that's what my bedroom is supposed to be like. That's not authentic for me. That's not how I feel. So clearly I'm at a deficit. Clearly something isn't working if I can't keep up with this cultural standard that has been set for us. And it's not true. That's not the standard. And that isn't what needs to be happening in each of our own individual sexuality. And so, and if it is, if your bedroom looks like that, okay, that's good too. It's, there is no judgment on any of it, wherever you're at. And so that's really the thing I want to leave us with. And that is wherever you're at in this journey, it has been integrated into us by outside forces that have not had our best at heart. It's had controlling us at heart. It's had um, financially making us their uh, financial benefit at heart, but it hasn't had our actual best interest at heart. So we've been shamed and enculturated and told certain things about ourselves that wherever you're at on that spectrum, I just wanna invite you to embrace that. Like that's, that's where you are. We've been impacted by a lot of things. It's perfect. And start from a place of not I'm broken. Start from a place of curiosity. Start from a place of I'm willing to lean in because I'm interested in being a fully embodied and present human. Not because I need to look like anything else or be different, but because what I'm looking for is to be whole. And I think of what we do in the sacred sexuality world very much like yoga. You go to the mat again and again and again. And I didn't understand what yoga was doing to my psyche and my body and my heart for probably a couple of years when I began. And then I started to understand yoga is not even about the body and the poses. Yoga is about becoming connected within myself and understanding energy and the energy I have and hold and run. And so sacred sexuality is much the same way. Wherever you're at, lean in with curiosity and an open heart, embrace where you are, and then see what unfolds for you in your own individual intimacy path. That's what I wanna leave us with. Mm. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to have you here. I will see you this weekend and Mm. um, Yay. Yeah. For everyone else, we're going to put all this information in the in the comments here and please go over follow Kim on her pages. She's on Facebook, she's on Instagram. What is your it's succulent succulent living with Kim is my Facebook is my Facebook group. Um and that's also my Instagram succulent living with Kim cuz that's what I'm about is learning how to succulents are a plant that feed themselves that water themselves from the inside out. You don't have to water a succulent. She waters herself. And Mm. so this is about succulent living. And I'd like to help you be that way. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. And bye to everyone out there. Thank you for tuning in. You can find all of these episodes at jamieblack.com. All of the new ones from season two are going to be going up soon, but everything from season one is there. Um, All the rest of everything that I do and my music and my readings and everything is there. Um, And if you're ever trying to get in touch with any of these beings um, that have been on the show, also I can help you with links and websites and all of that stuff. So thank you again, Kim, Mm. and thank you for the work that you're doing, and blessed be. Mm -hmm. And you too, sister. Thank you so much for your willingness to be right out and put it right out into the world and let us see what it's like to live the life of a priestess. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.